NCTV 45, the train, anytime on your time. This program was provided through funding from Cedars Restaurant in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. A special thanks to Cedars featuring Middle Eastern, Italian, and American cuisine. Welcome to the Cedar Sports Court, everybody. I'm Alex Laverson, and with me, as always, is our producer, Mr. Angelo Parada. And, um, Angelo, I know this uh, new story about uh, four officials from the Rams game being from California. You must be really excited about that because that kind of goes along with your um, theories about corrupt officiating. Well, you know what? I, when I look at what's going on in football, the rules are simple. I mean, we're not... And I go back to the first Patriots Super Bowl. The rule was, after five yards, you're not allowed to chuck the guy. And I go 15 yards downfield, and they're bumping and grinding. Okay, well, hello. Somebody got to get a flag. And if you're the person supposed to watch that, and you can't determine interference, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. I just uh, think it's crazy because this is three weeks after the game happened, and we're still talking about it. Well, I mean, this it's is so, really. No, no, no. no I, the, think about it. Okay, this is only because it's close to the big game. Okay, but what would have happened if when the birdies down there in Baltimore, the ball goes flying back, the Browns pick it up and run for a touchdown, the Steelers are in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, okay. This is only because it's right on the doorstep, and now everybody's going, well, you know, this is affecting the game. It's affecting the game in a major way. Well, that, the Rams, the okay. call pass interference, and, obviously. And, and, you know, well, 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 how about is it a catch or isn't a catch in New Orleans? when the Steelers were playing down there. And sure, everybody goes, well, you're a Steeler fan. Well, when you're only showing the games in your market, and we're seeing Steeler games, and, and we're seeing Browns games to a greater degree, to a lesser degree, rather, then you're going to comment on what you see. Nobody goes, hey, there was a mugging in China, but I didn't see it. You know, did you see the call in the game last night? No, but I imagine there was a bad call in the basketball game. Well, you, you comment on what you see. And what you see, hey, referee, call what you see. If you don't see it, don't call it on me. Mm -hmm. Okay? But they ain't calling what they see. And it's becoming blatant, uh, you know. And it's not just happening in one, you know, let's not pick on just one group of people. It's happening here, here, and here. In the what I call the, uh, the, the steps of football, leading all the way up to, the top, okay. I, I just I. It is what it is, and I can't. Well, I, I think a lot of 
uh, viewers or fans in general. You know, a lot of times they get tired of uh, Steeler fans or any. They they get tired of people always blaming. You know, the officials. They say a lot of times when fans do that, they're making excuses for their team's poor performance. It's like a fallback argument. So, yeah, there are. Yeah, yeah, there are truths. Yeah, fallback so. arguments only have merit when the fallback is true. Mm -hmm. I mean, here the fallback argument. Let's go back in time. The fallback argument with the Rams and the Saints. The Saints were up thirteen. They still should have held on to the lead. No, the fallback argument. The teams will make mistakes. Rulings. On the field should not be mistakes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Somebody has to be perfect. Now, we've given you all the tools of perfection, and and that was so blank. I, I, I hate when they say, well, you know, you had the lead. Teams will make mistakes. That's the nature of the game. Okay, now, you know, I mean, how about Buffalo Bill Brady here, mm -hmm. uh, okay? He throws an interception, and all of a sudden, we get a flag, okay, offsides. The view is like a parallax view because they're shooting behind the guy. You don't know if they blew up the player bigger to make it look like he's across the line. You don't know. There's a lot of things you can do with cameras. And I'm not accusing anybody by any stretch of the imagination. But it's a call that they go, did it impede the play of the game? And it was, no. Brady released the ball quickly. The guy wasn't in Brady's thing. Okay, there's been other times we've looked down the line. And it looks like people were off sides. Okay, so Brady throws an interception. The flag comes out, and Brady's allowed to score. And they go, oh, Brady's a great quarterback. Yeah, 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 yeah. So is Ben. Okay, let's give Ben all the chances Brady got. Well, I think the key thing here is like what you were saying. Does the penalty affect? the play or the pace of the game. So that kind of goes back with a situation. Let's say there's a holding call on the other side of the line of scrimmage, um, and it doesn't really affect whether the quarterback would have gotten sacked or any type of the – any way the play could have developed well, or happened. In that case, I wouldn't even – I'm okay with penalties being in kind of – well, see, you, even but if you they can't. Are. You can't. Let me tell you what the problem with that is. The problem with that is... This is a precedent. It's going to be inconsistent. There breeds the inconsistency of the play. Uh, what about in game-changing okay. moments? Like a okay. Yeah. Every, every snap of the down, with the call of offsides... Every step of the down becomes a game-changing moment. Because here, if you call the penalty in game A and don't call the penalty in game B, where that would not have affected the play of the game, now the official chose the outcome. And the game should probably be the Rams versus the Chiefs. Or the Rams sit home and, and it's the Chiefs versus the Saints. It'd be opening up a can of worms. Today. Okay. So, hey, referee, call what you see. Yeah. I, I guess I'm saying, like, I I wouldn't be bothered if they did something. I wouldn't, I'm not saying I agree with this, but I wouldn't be bothered, like, if the game's on the line. And let's say, for example, that pass interference... Um, the Rams defender made on the Saints play. Let's say if that happened on the other side of the field. Had nothing to do with where the ball was being thrown. That's precisely what happened in the, the, the next game. That's what I'm saying. 
Did you see? It didn't matter in one game. The officials are getting... The, it, the rule is the rule. If we're going to play, it happens. And I agree. Then it happens. Mm -hmm. If we're going to play, it doesn't affect the thing, then that creates judgment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, let's take the judgment out. Did he hold him? Yes. Okay. Did he, you know, if, if you are a defensive back, and I can only chuck you in five yards. I come up and I chuck you. Now, if the person's trying to run away and you're still tied up with them after five yards, then it's your fault. Because I don't know of any wide receivers that go and say, I'm going to go run after this guy and block him. Okay? It doesn't happen. That's and we better go. Let's try and work. We better go to a break. Yeah, but um, let's go to a break here. Um, we'll have more to talk about in our second segment, but now a word from our sponsors. This program furnished by the MAD Unit, Mobile Auto Detailing, C. Michael Sad, at themadunit.com. Holy snowman, it's the Turf Bar, home of great sandwiches appetizers, tacos, you name it, they have it at the Turf Bar. It's just the right food you'll enjoy. Those special drinks, they're there too. And get that nice cold beverage, relax, enjoy the Turf Bar. If you ain't there, you should be. Hello friends, Pinella Brothers, 1701 Hamilton Street, provided funding for this program. Great food and drink, Pinella Brothers. And welcome back to the Cedar Sports Corner, everybody, for our second segment of the show. And, um, Angela, you said you had a surprise topic you want to talk about. Well, the West Virginia Mountaineers are 15 and 5. Disgusting. Okay, and the Dukes of Duquesne, okay, are also 15 and 5. Is it time to put up your Dukes as Pitts, 12 and 6? Just saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, is it time to put up your Dukes and say, Hey, the Duke's got to go to the dance. I'm not sure how this is a surprise segment, unless you just wanted to annoy me by starting it out with West Virginia, which probably I think was the case, because um, everyone knows how much I can't stand West Virginia sports. But um, look, Pitt still, what Pitt and Jeff Capel, what Jeff Capel has done with Pitt is still impressive. Now they've lost a handful of games in a row, but let's also keep in mind their competition's been really tough. And no one was saying that they're going to make the dance. I'll be happy if they make the NAT, NIT. Um, it's obviously impressive what Duquesne's doing. And that win over... Virginia um, Commonwealth? Well, the win over Duquesne looks uh, keeps looking better for Pitt. So I'm okay with Duquesne winning. I always root for our local uh, sports teams at colleges. So... You know, the more Duke King keeps winning, the more I honestly, seriously, the big looks more well twelve for Pitt. and six Pitt looks good. Well, then I'm saying the win looks more impressive. No, it looks like to me now. See that, that that's it looks like everybody finds it uh, not sometime, and that was an upset. Well, no, but and like the Dukes but, are like rolling along. If Pitt was somehow to find a way on the bubble come tournament time. And Duquesne, you know, makes the tournament or, you know, wins their conference or whatever, the selection committee will look like, hey, Pitt had a really impressive win over this great Duquesne team. If it comes down to Pitt and Duquesne, who do you take? It would, it would depend how the rest of the season unfolds for Pitt. I mean, if Pitt is flopping the rest of the games, you know, the rest, flopping the rest of the season and losing their games, then the If it was win. right now. If it was right now. When was the last time Duquesne lost? I 
I mean, you're scrolling, so it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Well, then I could probably <laughs> tell you that I'll probably go with Duquesne because in college basketball, we both know how momentous. It's time to put up your Dukes. I have a convert. No, look, I, look I'm a fan of all my teams, but I'll be realistic. It, he college... likes now. Now, listen. Listen. He likes Duquesne, Notre Dame, and the Browns. Now, we just got to give him off of that Brown stuff. I'm not. I don't like the Browns. Listen, <laughs> Angela, while well, you're trying to derail me here, what I'm trying to tell you is that in college basketball, like I've been saying, it's all about momentum. What have you done for me lately? Pitt has not been playing well the past few games. Duquesne's been playing well for a while. If they were to play again now, I'd probably say Duquesne would win. I would. Okay. Now, Pitt could go on a roll here in the next week or two, maybe, and who knows, Duquesne could slide. But going up to the end of the season, I would rather Pitt, not that I want Pitt to lose any games, but I'd rather Pitt be hot going towards the end of the season, and I feel like you should be the same way with Duquesne. How do you feel about pass and tap? How do I feel about what? Pass and tap. Pass and tap? Yeah. I'm not sure what you're driving out here. Well, isn't that the, the Pro Bowl pass and tap? Oh. Well, I thought we were going to save that for our third segment. <laughs> See, but... I did it to him again. I love what I did it to him. <laughs> well, how about this? Let's save that for our third segment, and we'll take a break okay, now. Okay, but wait. I got another question. Okay. Okay. The Celtics. Are they the team from the East? I don't care about the NBA. Like, I don't care about the NBA at all right now. Listen, Lonzo Ball wants to be traded. Anthony Davis requests a trade. Blah, blah, blah. LeBron, LeBron's not playing. So everything right now just kind of seems just like... LeBron's blah, blah, blah. not playing. You, you see? Well, 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 I'm not playing. Let me go to the beach because I'm not playing. Okay. You I... know, listen, I, I, I just, it, it's just a... Listen, I love basketball, you know, but right now... I'm just, uh, I just, I'm just not interested because it's just too much hoopla, you know. Hoop, hoopla. <laughs> yeah, that's an Angelo Parada. Ooh la la. Let's go to a break. Let's go. To, listen, let's go to our break. We'll talk about the Pro Bowl in our third segment. And now we're from our sponsors. Today's programming is brought to you by NCTV 45 and NC Radio 450. Newcastle's community television station. This program furnished by Sporting Goods, 23 East Washington Street, Newcastle. Call 724-658-2535. These fine businesses provided funding for this program. Gatherings, Town and Country, and On Target. Question, what am I? What are you? Yeah. Nuts. No. See, uh, for those at home, look, two pair of glasses. I'm a football official. You're a football official. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. See? I don't know if that would help either the refs right now. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> But, I can't see, I can't see, I got uh, my eyes closed. Oh, jeez, I don't even, you're crazy, man. But listen, <laughs> I want to talk, before we actually get into the Pro Bowl, there is uh, something that I do want to talk about, and that is Wallet Hub has ranked Pittsburgh number one in the country when it comes to football fans. So they were, Wallet Hub ranked Pittsburgh as the number one city for football fans. Well, what does that mean? the number one city for football fans. Well, the rankings were based on things like team performance, franchise value, and fan engagement. Now, if we're going fan engagement um, and performance, uh, I'm a, I have a feeling Pitt Panthers did not carry the city so much there. It was the Duquesne Dukes who were in the playoffs. That, that's who it was. I have a feeling the Steelers mostly carried this and Pitt Duquesne contributed no. a little bit. But hey. listen, Pittsburgh beat out other cities like Boston, Green Bay, and New York. You know who came in last? It's Cleveland. 
Now, I don't... How do I know he would know that? Well, because it says right here in the article. That's well, no, because he's a Cleveland fan. No, I'm not a Cleveland fan. Listen. Listen to me. All right? This, this, this ranking isn't what city has the best fans. It's the best city for fans. So if you're a football fan... Uh, you want to be in Pittsburgh. Well, everybody knows you want to be in Western Pennsylvania if you like football. That's like saying, you know, you want to carry an umbrella if it's raining. Okay. Well, I... I, I, I you know? Well, yeah, I, I mean, mean, you got the Whippeals, you got listen, the Steelers, you, you got you, that. You know, listen, the idea of a perfect Western Pennsylvania wedding, you make the crash green, you put yard markers, and you make... Instead of that, you're carrying a bouquet. She carries a football. She goes down the aisle. She's at mid-aisle. It looks like she's going all the way as she goes on up to the altar. That's the perfect football marriage in western Pennsylvania. Ha, I thought I didn't give that any thought. I My did. best friend got married uh, in October, and they came out uh, with terrible towels when they were introducing the you know, See, bridesmen and western men. Pennsylvania. Yeah, and you know, now, so now here's a question. Mm-hmm. How about the pens? How about them? Oh, Sidney Crosby in the All-Star Game. Um, just, an, just another award to add to his list, the MVP. I, I, I'm just saying, like, your Pittsburgh Penguins are doing a fa phenomenal job. Then they lose last night or the other night? Yeah, but you look yeah, at yeah, the overall, overall product. Yeah. I mean, geez, oh, man, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. they, they're looking at a pretty good playoff run here, and just get into the playoffs. You know, I don't rank, rankings to me or seedings to me are too too important when it comes to hockey. Or I think any sport or any league that has like a best of seven series or whatever. You know, I don't think it's the most important thing. Um, so just get in there, and I think yeah, the pen should do some work. Now we were going to talk about the Pro Bowl, and Angelo, Dion Sanders. How about the Golden Knights? Doesn't it sound like a hotel room? The Golden Knights. <laughs> Where'd you say? I stayed up the Golden Knights last. So you don't want to talk? You still want to talk hockey, then, huh? I just, I just was bringing that up. How about, I don't even know about the Golden Knights. Yeah, I, what, uh, Mark Andre Fleury, cool. No, I was just saying it sounds like a hotel room that the you Golden book Knights? in Vegas. Yeah. The, Where'd you room? stay when you went? I stayed at the Golden Knights. All right, fair enough. Um, but Deion Sanders said it best um, the other night when he said, what a shame the Pro Bowl has become. It was a game that used to be taken seriously. You have a game of the best players in the NFL competing against each other and you compete to see who the best is, it's not that game anymore. And he said it's a joke. It's like you said, pass and tap now. It's disgusting to watch. And not only that, you you have multiple... When they select the players for the Pro Bowl, it's like you could still wait a few weeks after to see who else is going into the Pro Bowl. They can... Like, oh, we're going to add this person because this, per this player decides to skip the Pro Bowl, so we'll add another Pro Bowl player. And then it's like, okay, so we got another Pro Bowl player that wasn't originally part of the hand-selected Pro Bowl players from weeks ago. No one, the players well, don't want to play you, in well, it. here's what you have to do. You have to start the football season in September. And in theory, when you look at a September calendar, you're going to have four weeks of football. And I'm just looking at January calendar. 4, 11, 18, 25. You have four weeks of football. Then maybe you play two more weeks, okay, which is the second, okay, or, or the first and the eighth. I would just get rid of the Then game. you give everybody a bye the same week, and you play the Pro Bowl, and you come back. And the winner of the Pro Bowl determines where the Super Bowl is going to be, just like the baseball. Well, so if you win, that that'd be too hard. I I, I don't know. That's practical enough. Yeah, you know I mean, 
That's the, the, very practical. You know, the part of determining where the Pro Bowl or the Super Bowl is going to be, because that's years in advance it takes. You, know no, what I mean? you don't have to do years in advance. All you have to do is say, hey, guess what? The NFC won. We're playing out at the Rams. Or, I, hey, the AFC won. We're playing in New England. I'm okay with the Pro Bowl just ending. Honestly, and you want to have some type of award where you could select the players who would have been in the Pro Bowl, that's fine. But players don't want to play because they're afraid they're going to get hurt. And that's going to ruin their value moving forward. And especially, you know, let's say someone who's a player who's playing for a big contract. They get to the Pro Bowl and they get hurt in an exhibition game. But, you know, it is just a severe injury. And that affects their value going forward. You can still play football and not get severe injury. So I know, know. maybe have some type of skills competition. I I, I don't know. I get. I actually no, get where the skills players skills competition. Are. I want to go to sleep on. I get. But see, I'm saying I get where the players are coming from. Yeah, you know, unless they want to do something well, where if, well, if you make the well, Pro Bowl, well, the players well. get even more. Let me tell you financially. what. I get. We gotta go. And I get where the Duquesne Dukes are coming from. Let's go, Dukes. Oh, goodness. Let's go, Dukes, and let's go, Pitt. And no! Don't. Penn Station Ego. Keep following no! Penn Station Ego hoops, let's everybody. go, Dukes. Penn Station Ego hoops. time to put up your Dukes. All right, everybody. You all have a good Bye -bye. one, and we'll see you after the Super Bowl. A special thanks to the YMCA for caring about the Lawrence County community and providing funding for this program.